appreciate the the prayers. So for this this evening, uh, we're going to continue our, our our lesson in Matthew chapter five, as we're going through the Sermon on the Mount. During the course of of our our weeks uh, together, as we've been looking at uh, Matthew chapter five, uh, we've observed that uh, Jesus is delivering this this sermon to to mostly to to those who who he has healed uh, multitudes as the end of chapter four describes the various sick people and really outcasts of, of society, uh, diverse diseases and torments and people possessed with uh, devils and really the outcasts of society that, that, that society would say are just useless and a, and a bother, but, but Jesus has a, has a, has a wonderful w- way with them in, in being able to provide healing from from this from the troubles that that their life is, is facing and and as they cling to him uh, for for a spiritual teaching beyond the physical healing that they received he's got a beautiful message for them that they they've certainly never heard before uh, they've certainly perhaps have received their share of insults in life and and jesus has has a has a high calling and message for them in terms of being meek and and um merciful and pure in heart and and also that uh, have declaring that suffering for righteousness sake is a is a blessing and so the last two weeks, we've been looking at verses 10 and 11 in regards to uh, uh, those who are believers being persecuted. And Jesus concludes those thoughts in verse 12. And I'd just like to take a few moments uh, just, to, just to touch on, on verse 12 of Matthew 5. If somebody wouldn't mind reading that, and then we'll just discuss that what's stated there briefly. Verse 12. Yes, please. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. So, so in spite of persecutions, which which would be would appear to be a great difficulty and 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 painful. Um, and but perhaps uh, if if death should be the result of it, then 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 it's the entrance into into a heavenly heavenly reward, and which Jesus promises us. And and then he then he points out, for so persecuted they the prophets, which were before you. If we if we look in the book of Hebrews chapter eleven, um, it's kind of a hall of fame of, of faith of various various people and, and uh, throughout the Old Testament who, who took a stand for God and took a stand for God in faith and took a stand for righteousness. And often there, what the result was, was persecution from those who would not hear their stand for righteousness, even though it was the truth, even though it was the message from God, they were, they were persecuted in, in many different ways many different ways uh it talks about at the end of hebrews 11 mockings and scourgings bonds imprisonment stone sawn asunder slain with the sword wandering around uh, in sheepskins and goatskins destitute afflicted tormented but then then it says all these people who suffered all these things they are of whom the world was not worthy. The world and its and its rage and, and anger against against God and His Word and those who were sent to preach it were found to be the world wasn't worthy of their presence. And so also Jesus in in his in his sermon on the mount teaches. Those who would be following him, yes, the persecution will come. 
but this is actually a very high and lofty estate and calling not just because of the heavenly reward but you are you are numbered among these great prophets in, in that so no wonder when when paul and silas are in are in prison they are singing because they're found worthy to to suffer for for jesus' sake we we've talked about a few people in the old testament we've talked uh, about abel and how he was killed after after offering uh, his first fruits in a sacrifice and, and murdered by his his brother brother Cain in spite of that in spite of God's counsel to to do better um, we we're familiar with the with what Daniel went through in the in the tests in the lion's den and how how God delivered him uh, we're we're familiar with Elijah being chased in the uh, into the wilderness I believe we talked about briefly last week um, David being chased through the through the wilderness. Um, when Hebrews talks about one who was was sawn asunder, this is referring to uh, to the prophet Isaiah. Uh, the Bible doesn't record it, but there's there's many Jewish historians that record the the death of Isaiah being being placed inside a tree and sawn asunder and is cut in half. That was how he he met met his end. Jeremiah being cast into a, a, a dungeon and, and, and into a, a miry pit sinking down into the mud for, for declaring the prophecy of God, whether it be a, a message of, of, of rebuke or even a message of hope that, that their time, the time of Babylonian captivity would end. So many that, that preached God's word met tremendous opposition and persecution. But in, in God's perfect plan, these are, these are the ones of whom this world wasn't worthy of. They were so, de so devoted to God, they counted their lives not worthy to be something to be saved. But God's word is something to be saved and, and, and to be declared and shared. Jesus talks about in a, in a Luke chapter 11 about prophets who went before who were persecuted in Luke chapter 11 toward the end of the chapter he is uh, taking a very serious rebuke uh, of the lawyers and the Pharisees in this particular chapter Luke 11, telling the woe unto you, lawyers, and, and points out, ye build the sepulchers of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. And, and therefore also said the wisdom of God, this is verse 49 of Luke 11, therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. That the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. We know about Abel. Zacharias' story is maybe not, not quite as familiar. Um, it's it's tucked away in in Second Chronicles in in um, in the midst of uh, some very evil kings, and and Zechariah stands as a as a prophet, uh, telling them in Second Chronicles twenty four. Second Chronicles 24 talks about a, 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 new, uh, a new king coming into place, um, starting with verse uh, 17, after the death of King Jehoiada. And they left, after his death, they left the house of the Lord their God, their fathers, and served groves and idols 
and wrath came upon Judah. And it records in verse 20 that the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, and said unto them, Why transgress ye the commandment of the Lord that ye cannot prosper? Because ye have forsaken the Lord, he hath also forsaken you. And what's the response? And they conspired against him and stoned him with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. He stood up and declared God's word in God's house. And they stoned him. And what, what is, as he's being stoned, verse 22 records upon it. He records at the end of verse 22, it says about Zacharias, when he died, he said, the Lord look upon it and require it. The Lord will judge it. Similar to like how, how, in a, uh, how Stephen said it when he was stoned, that he said, the Lord lay this, not this into their, to their charge. Very forgiving, like Jesus on, on the cross knowing that God would be his avenger. And, and by the words of Jesus Christ, we see that uh, Jesus did know it all the way from Abel, and he would require it. God will be the avenger of, of, those, who, of those who suffer for, for his sake. We don't need to take that, any kind of vengeance or violence in our, our own hands. But, but it is a... It is a a privilege to be counted as such. And Jesus puts, puts them in, in such a lofty place among, among those who, if, if we would say their names today, we would think highly of them, but they suffer greatly. I don't know about in your Bible, but in my Bible, um, in Matthew chapter 5, as we transition from verse 12 to verse 13, I have a paragraph symbol. I don't know if you perhaps have it in your Bible. Um, so there's, there seems to be a little bit of a change in the, the means of, of uh, how Jesus is, is expressing his teaching. And so we've got a kind of a group of teaching here in, in what's considered a paragraph between verses 13 through 16 talking about in somewhat of a, almost like a similar to a parable format, but giving some type of comparison to characteristics that those who would follow Jesus Christ would have in terms of their impact on the world. We've, we've talked, uh, he's been talking about various different types of being blessed, but now, themselves but now we're we're going to see some aspects of of its impact on the world and so if somebody wouldn't mind reading verse 13 mm. and uh for the remainder of our time uh let's let's we'll focus our discussion there you want me to read it oh, yes please feel free uh ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is there, it is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Okay, thank you. So I'm, I'm sure we've all heard this, this phrase, salt of the earth. And uh, even Brother Bob mentioned in the, in the, in the prayer. And... Um, and it's, it's somewhat of a common expression. And so maybe just to start examining this, um, you know, Jesus says, ye are the salt of the earth. So what, what is salt? What, what does it do that, um, what does it do? Let's, let's start there and then we can maybe make our comparison to believers after that. Well, salt brings out flavor. Okay. 
Preserves. Preserves. Okay, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It influences us. It influences, just like it says in the Bible here next to my uh, comes, the, the, you know, the Christian influence. Now, salt influences like, uh, like the choice said, it, uh, it has an effect, a positive effect. Sure. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of in terms of both the taste and the and the lasting preservation of the food, of food, yeah. salt has a, has a very good effect. Excellent. Any anything else? When you, this is for the Florida, Florida folks, uh, when you go in the Atlantic Ocean, um, is it easy to stay afloat? Well, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the buoyancy, I think, is one sixth uh, less, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, 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 what you call gravity or whatever you want to call it. It's, it, it, it's, uh, I'm that very much in a in a in a in a salient salient pool. You feel mm -hmm. it too, you know. Sure, it makes a difference. I I found that to be the case. Uh, that I find it much easier to float in spite of the waves, uh, rather in the Atlantic Ocean versus other other pool or regular just a regular pool. Brother Bob, did you have a thought? Well, yeah, and the Dead Sea makes it even easier. Um, it's mm -hmm. The higher the concentration of salt, the more buoyancy there is. Mm -hmm. Sure. But when Absolutely. In, in Syracuse, salt is very good for the roads when it's icy. So <laughs> it, it takes away the, the ice so you can drive safely and walk safely. Absolutely. So that's Absolutely. also an application. And I think sure. My grandmother had some sort of a, a old world uh, remedies for certain things. She would put salt on a wound and um, if she had a cut. And I think what it did was draw the water out and it kept the wound cleaner if, there were, if she had a cut. Mm. Nobody knows about that except my grandmother who is no longer with us. But... <clears throat> I think Gunda would know some of those uh, remedies. I know her dad did something too with, um, well, he used honey. <laughs> you honey? Know, it, honey, uh, yeah, honey, he did. Well, we know honey is good too, so. Yeah. But uh, salt, my, I remember my grandmother putting salt on a cut and it is, it draws the water, the, the, the light, light not the blood, but it draws the water and it washes the the wound from yeah the body's the body's cleaning it. Hmm. A lot of bacteria won't grow in a high salt concentration. That's part of it too. So like if, hmm. when you when it's like soaking your feet in Epsom salts or or a wound in Epsom salt, same sort of a thing. You're you're. It, one of the things I, I realized too was, uh, you know, it, you, your body needs salt. You, you, and I, I quick Googled it, love Google, right? So it said that the human body needs uh, about 500 milligrams of salt every day in order to maintain nerve impulses and uh, be able to contract muscles and relax muscles. Your muscles won't work if you don't have enough salt. Didn't. But if, if you have too much salt, that is also a problem. But not enough salt, your body wouldn't function either. So it, it's kind of interesting that salt's actually an integral part of our uh, ability to process everything. We need it for our nerves. And also to so, maintain maintain the balance with with uh, it says here with with water and minerals other minerals it salt helps balance it out so like those of us that are here in Florida and we sweat a lot 
we realize you also sometimes need to take salt tablets in order because you sweated out too much salt. I worked in Richmond uh, for many, many years in, in a factory where there was no air conditioning and it got a lot hotter than here. Um, it was routinely over 100 degrees inside the factory during the summer. And I had a habit of wearing a brown, a brown work shirt. And I would often go home and there'd be a complete ring of white on my back from all the salt mm. that I had mm. lost through the day. And you really do need to replenish that because your body needs it. Otherwise, you're, you will start getting muscle cramping. You'll start having shakes because your nerves aren't working right. Salt's an, an integral part of what we are. Yeah, yeah. Tony was saying animals, well, all, all grazing animals, you give them a salt lick. So they get as much salt as they need. So it's got a, got a very so, some very important benefits on in a wide variety of ways. I mean, it's 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 amazing. I mean, and such such a diverse group of things. And I'm glad somebody pointed out about honey uh, in terms of its healing properties. Salt and honey have have a similarity in that they don't go bad like uh, in terms of their uh, decay um they they both don't go don't go bad and now so jesus so now that we, yeah now that we've covered these various aspects of salt how can we apply them or understand them in the context of what jesus says and his comparison where he says ye are the salt of the earth um let, I, i'm gonna try to by memory to go through in order of the characteristics that were were mentioned i think first was a mentioning of of a flavoring or bringing out the bringing out the flavor how do how does a believer do that how does a what type of flavor is a believer bringing out I mean, that's obviously a figurative of course flavor but um. well we are like brother bob senior used to say if you are a witness it just depends what kind and to whom we're always a witness it's true it just depends what kind and to whom Yes, I think that we're godly, we're to be a godly influence. And a godly influence is one that that fosters peace and and goodness between people. That would be, and if they, if that doesn't exist on the earth, then then and the people who claim to be Christians, if we if we don't reflect that goodness and peacefulness and gentleness that uh, God wants us to, to portray, then, then we are useless. Yeah, that definitely makes, makes sense, especially in, in, in the context of what Jesus said just following. If the salt doesn't have its savor, it's good for nothing. Yeah, and uh, Jesus said in the 10th chapter of Mark, 50th verse, salt is good, but if the salt have lost his, save, his saltiness, wherewith shall it be seasoned? Have salt in yourselves, he says, and have peace one with another. And that's how that people will know if, we are, if we're peacemakers, we we are the children of God. People will know us as the children of God. So 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 if, yeah, that that flavoring is is a, is an aspect to to carry with us. And I'm, I'm really glad you you brought brought out that particular example in Mark, 
how Jesus it says, have salt in yourselves and peace among uh, among among uh, the brethren and and it, and it, that's it's something that the flavoring the godly f- flavoring or godly impact of the life is, is something that that a believer always needs to always needs to maintain and i hope we'll have some time to to address uh, some of the ways to help main, maintain that uh, but a similar a similar passage in regards to that in terms of our speaking and an impact uh, is in uh, Colossians chapter four, uh, verses. Uh, actually, I, I just want to maybe touch on that. If if, if you have a brief moment to uh, f- open to the Colossians chapter four, at the beginning of this chapter, um, the Apostle Paul is is asking for prayers. So that he, as he's evangelizing and spreading the gospel, would know what to speak, would know what to say, and and for for wisdom. So if if somebody has it uh, in Colossians chapter four, um, if somebody wouldn't mind reading verse five and six. In terms of Apostle Paul's instruction regarding this. Speaking wisdom to them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Okay, so here's that same same uh, expression or uh, characteristics mm-hmm. about, about salt. Seasoning, flavoring, making the impact uh, on our surroundings. And even how verse five says, toward them that are without, those who are outside the body of Christ, that that we, if we have that that seasoning with salt to be to be the godly influence, it, it shouldn't be something that that we have maybe some kind of switch, where we shut off our shut off our salty salty now and or or, or and, and turn it on later when I'm with uh, believers, but let your speech be always with grace. And seasoned with salt. That 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 should be our our, our godly characteristics as we're we're submitted unto the Lord and depending on Him for the words to speak. He can season us with that with that godly influence as we take take part in His Word. That it it as as our lives are hid in Christ. That that our less of our own selfish impurities and more of god's flavoring and impact can be free to flow any other thoughts on on this uh idea of of uh, this godly impact well i would like to share uh, some uh, uh comments a little bit here sure old grandson who came uh, to visit us in florida uh, for a few days uh, in Arnold's <laughs> condo, he uh, he he was up in the evening and he went downstairs by the intercoastal there and and he was praying that he was praying within himself and he asked the Lord to show him if anybody would approach him that he could talk to him about the Lord. Mm. And so he was there, and there were men down there talking. And all at once, this one man comes to him and wants to talk to him about baseball. That was the beginning. So when he that man came to him, that was an answer to prayer for him. He knew that he had to talk to this man that wanted to talk about baseball. And they had such a lengthy conversation, and, uh, and he shared God's uh, word with him and encouraged him to read the Bible and and uh, and he was a Catholic. Uh, he was Catholic, but he was not going to church or anything like that. Anyhow, what I wanted to say because the next thing we were talking about is also salt and light. One of the last words this man told my grandson was that he was a beacon on the hill. And I was so touched to hear that come from this man's mouth. When 
when our grandson shared that with us, that's exactly what he was. He was at that moment, he was doing what God put in his heart and he wanted to share the good news of, of God with this person and the man received it as such and he told him he was a beacon on the hill and, and he should become a minister. He shouldn't become a, a nurse. He shouldn't become a nurse. He should become a minister. Anyhow, so it doesn't always take a lot. And, uh, and you know, he's a young man. He's, what, 21 or 20? No, he's 20. Uh, 20, uh, 20, 20, 20. Yeah, 20, 21, yeah. He's 20 years old. So it, uh, and uh, I, I was very happy to uh, hear what he did and that he did encourage this person to read his Bible and he shared what God had done for him. I need to uh, compliment what uh, Helga said. He went this evening down. He wanted to go to the beach. Okay, this was already get, getting dark. Okay, and you know, being here, he's in, come about eleven o'clock. We were wondering, well, wait a second. I hope he didn't go in the ocean. You know, so uh, Helga texted him, and he he texted back, "I'm evangelizing." So he didn't know what he was doing, but he came back to up in the condo past midnight. So, you know, we had no clue what he was doing. Now we knew. I mean, Helga just, you know, he he was evangelizing. And, you know, so he, he redeemed the time very well. That's wonderful. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Yeah. But... You know that that this the person called him a beacon of light. Yeah. You know he he only talked. It seems like he he only talked with one person. You know it only takes. You know maybe we we think we need to to have some great, uh, great success or or great a lot of impact. One person is also a flavoring, making a difference. And give, spreading that godly influence to one person is a, is a godly influence too. But he took, but what was the critical thing? He took the time in faith to pray so that he would, would have that, that right answer. In, uh, now, here's my, my, my time to give a testimony on, on your grandson's behalf. I see him often with the, with the young man who was recently baptized uh, who wasn't wasn't going to church in his youth, but when when someone told him to encourage him that he could be forgiven and to and to uh, and to trust in the word word of God and and this young man took it uh, took it in in faith and and, and absorbed it. Um, uh, your grandson's been uh, able to be. Uh, both of your grandsons have been able to be a, a very good impact on him, and he's uh, he's grown grown very much. One person, but it's still godly a godly influence, and and God is pleased with it. It's it's not on, you know, the world like we talked about persecution on the world scale. The persecution is the most awful thing, but God's God's looking at things differently and as a great reward. Even what in what may not seem so earth shattering. You know, I Any, think that yeah, I, th I think that that sometimes we 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 think we need to do something big or whatever. Salt salt doesn't say anything. Salt doesn't you know salt isn't something that uh, it, it just makes its presence known. And I think sometimes when we when we really stop and think about it, we should make the world a better place. We should make the world taste better to the people around about us just because of who we are and what we are. Um, we, it's, it's not even necessarily what we say sometimes. It's just how we act in situations and how we are towards other people and, and the ability to show somebody the love of God, whether we have it, I mean, it's great if we get a chance to evangelize with them too. I'm not at all saying we shouldn't, but every aspect of our lives should be able to bring some kind of added flavor to somebody's life. Just 
by virtue of the spirit that, that should be leading us. Uli's got a comment. I have to, um, what you just mentioned, I have to tell you, so when your brother David used to be my production manager, uh, my controller, who was not a godly man, had all kinds of problems, told me, I wish I would be like David. Because he observed David, okay, on a daily basis. And he knew David's family. David at that time, three children, and my controller at that time, I think three or four children. And I knew both people's lives, okay? It's just, just said, it's what you do. You don't have to say necessarily anything. It's your conduct, your conduct of, li conduct of living. That's why you can become a Christian influence, a good one, uh, analogous to, to salt, okay? Of course, we're gonna talk more about them verses 14 and 15 next week, hopefully. Definitely. In, in um, I, I'm not sure, Brother Bob, next week, how, how much of, of, of this, I think we could probably have a whole nother additional lesson uh, continuing on, on the preserving aspect, uh, preserving and healing aspects of, of salt in the, or in the compare the salt comparison of, of the Christian life. Um, but in, we are at 832. I don't want to, I don't want to cut it cut it too short in, in terms of the uh, a very critical point in, in regards to the salt losing its its flavor uh, which I, I've kind of struggled to, to to understand how that could be other than impurities um, perhaps someone may have a different answer my in terms of the study I've been able to do on it is that the the, the, the salt from the Dead Sea, uh, often had more more impurities than our our modern table salt, and and in, and in comparing this this verse about the salt of the earth from Matthew five with uh, the verse um, with the uh, what Jesus says around the time in the Gospel of Mark when he talks about salt that Brother Arnold mentioned, and also in Luke chapter fourteen he also says the same thing. Uh, about salt being good, but if salt has lost its um, savoriness, um, it's it's good for nothing. In the Gospel of Mark, just preceding those those verses, talking about salt being good and um, being seasoned with salt, it talks. Jesus says, "If your right eye offends you, pluck it out. If your arm offends you, cut it off. It is better to enter into life maimed than it, than with two legs into." into eternal hellfire there's there's an element of uh, of christian purity that in order for that salt to have its full effect that godly influence and full effect there needs to be a purity of a devotion similar in luke 14 um prior to this and it's right at the end of the chapter of luke 14 talking about counting the cost in, ter in terms of a great undertaking um, counting the cost and, and considering, um, and Jesus says, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt hath lost its savor, where which shall it be salted? There's an element of, of, of purity and, and pure devotion and pure, pure faith that, and pure obedience that God's God's calling us to, in order to not have our, our godly impact uh, and godly flavoring diminished as, as we serve him. And so, so in terms of that, I, I see that in uh, these elements and when Jesus again speaks about salt, and, and I'm sure there's, there's many other ways to, to look at it, but, um, but I, will, I will leave that for another time. Brother Bob, did you have a comment? Yeah, may, maybe what we should do is uh, we, we just next week we'll continue. I mean, we backed up one verse a little bit at the beginning. Yeah. So why don't we? Uh, and and I'll let you take it next week then too, and we'll we'll finish talking a little bit about salt because I think you're you're right. There's a lot more that we could could have spoken about and and haven't, but uh, sure we can do that next week.
Sure. Yeah, I would appreciate that. There's there's some other even examples in the Old Testament about a covenant of salt. I, I think when we talk about pre preserve, preserve what salt as a preservative, I think that may may blend very nicely. Sure. Um, and, and I'm sure by next, I'm sure next uh, Wednesday, I I will be even more washed out than today. So. <laughs> It's fine. It's if fine. I could, if I could be of assistance, I'm I'm happy to do that. We'll Great. do that. I see we lost Brother Arnold, um, but uh, I don't know exactly how. But Uli, you want to close with prayer then for this evening? <clears throat> Let's turn to the Lord again. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that this evening we could be together to talk about and study Your Word, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity again and are reminded what we should be, the salt of the earth and its many uh, benefits and help us to be reminded in our everyday life, each and every one, where we might be useful and listen to your Holy Spirit and learn from this and become more of an active agent as what salt ought to be, Father. So we thank you again for ha having us reminded this evening, studying your word. And we prayed for many people this evening, and you know them. We don't need to reiterate again. You know their needs. You know our needs. You know what is needful, Father. And we want to commit all these things again to your grace and your keeping. Again, we commit the balance of this evening, your care, and thank you again. Through Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Amen. amen.